Very good Tuesday to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the European Outlook for the second day of the working week. This is the past 72 hours in terms of the rainfall. We've seen a fair amount of rain actually across far northern England and much of Scotland, particularly across southern, central and western areas, not so much in the east. Notice here parts of Northern Ireland as well picking up uh, close to an inch of rain. Parts of the Republic of Ireland seeing even more than that, 37.1 millimetres of rain falling at uh, Bellamit. So, um, uh, you know, it's been a fairly wet uh, course of the past weekend and also the beginning of the working week. Um, and we have got very little in the way of rainfall um, over eastern areas and southern areas of the British Isles here. Looking at the past 24 hours, we did see another frontal system moving through. Very gusty winds and uh, heavy wind-driven rain uh, moving in from a southerly direction during late last night through the first half of today. The sun is back out now, but it was raining quite heavily during the overnight period. And in fact, it's actually the warmest day in a good week or so here at the, the house 20 Celsius has been achieved. Uh, we may scrape 21 Celsius before the end of the day. But you notice here the rain totals in the last 24 hours or so is looking like this here. And we did see uh, some rain to speak about over western areas and central areas. 16.2 and 13.6 appears to be some of the higher rainfall totals in the last 24 hours or so. Looking at the current temperatures at the time of record, which is just before 3 p.m. in the afternoon, we do have 23 Celsius at Kinloss, thanks to strong southerly winds. We do have 24, 25 Celsius down in East Anglia. Elsewhere, upper teens to around the 20 Celsius mark, both in Ireland, Northern Ireland, and the whole of the UK mainland. Moving across to Europe, this is how the conditions are looking in terms of the temperature. Upper 30s, no surprise here, across the heart of Iberia mid to high 20s in France, as well as uh, through the low countries in the central areas of Europe. The heat continues. What well, has been a very, very hot, long summer down in the Balkan region. But uh, speaking about uh, the temperature anomalies, um, oh, this is the 850 temperature, sorry, of the ECMWF. And, and the current situation looks like this. We've got an area of low pressure to the west, got a frontal system um, almost stretched out across the heart of the UK mainland. We'll look at that in just a second here. Bringing cloud and outbreaks of rain uh, drier to the uh, to the north and to the south of that frontal system. And in the sunshine, temperatures responding, especially with that southerly flow. But you notice here the heat is extending from Iberia up into the UK here due to that uh, westward position of the low out over the Atlantic Basin. We've got the, the southerly flow to contend with here but nothing exceptional nothing major to speak about that being said however as we move into the day tomorrow which is wednesday obviously we do have that 15 celsius isotherm just about scraping the southeast of the uk and at the surface with sunshine temperatures will respond we may get close to 30 celsius tomorrow afternoon 25 26 celsius this afternoon tomorrow afternoon 29 possibly close to 30 celsius then the frontal system draped across the central swathe of the british isles will sink south it will push that heat out of the way once again then we've got that area of low pressure to the north uh, generally between scotland and iceland and we notice here that the flow is coming in more from the west so we're going to see the temperatures drop from 29 celsius during the course of wednesday to around uh, 22 23 possibly 24 on thursday as the winds turn from southwest to more westerly um, so you can see that the heat kind of gets kicked out of the way once again and then we've got higher pressure beginning to exert its influence from the south stretch really from the azores azores i noticed the comment there saying about my pronunciation of the uh, of the azores um yeah um everybody's got their own pronunciation as long as it actually sounds about right i suppose that's the main thing but generally speaking we've got high pressure extended from the Azores, Azores, up through the UK and towards Scandinavia here. But you notice here during the course of um, Friday, 12 UTC, we don't actually have a particularly warm air mass, despite higher pressure building in the temperatures at, in the middle levels of the atmosphere is actually not particularly warm, if you notice here. Then as we move in through the course of the weekend, higher pressure generally in control. We've got a nice 10, 26 millibar high over the North Sea, extending up into its, uh, the Norwegian Sea. But again, there's this kind of hangback of fresher air, if you notice. 
Then as we move into the um, lower half of the weekend and early next week, so this is the first few days of September, the ECMWF is not necessarily buying in to any major surge of heat. In fact, quite the opposite. Towards the middle portions of next week, Wednesday the 4th, we've got a northerly flow. And I notice some of the model output is suggesting temperatures dropping into the low single figures under clear skies and light winds uh, during the nights of the first few days of September, which is quite interesting when you think about that. Uh, and this area of high pressure is centred well out to the west of the British Isles, hence why we've got more north to northwest of the air flow here. So it looks as if the models are kind of coming and going with any kind of heat surge and they've kind of backed off quite considerably. Be interesting to watch this as we move through the next several days through the remainder of this working week in terms of the new model output and what it suggests with regards to heat. I do think higher pressure is building, but it actually looks as if the high pressure core is going to be lifting up towards the north of the UK. So quite a uh, the quite far north displaced region. You notice back um, at the end of last work week, I did show you the hemispheric view and how the pattern was changing. We're starting to shorten the wavelengths uh, that were extending into the middle altitude pattern from the Arctic, and we start to shrink that essential that trough and the, um, the 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 wave break pattern. We're starting to kind of see the lower pressure the trough actually kind of shrink and move northwards, allowing higher pressure to build into the middle altitude pattern. And you can see that quite nicely here in the uh, upcoming seven day CFSV2 500 millibar geopotential height pattern. So uh, you can see a lot less in the way of troughiness at, at our latitude here, and a lot more in the way of higher pressure. And then if we move to the, the day eight through 14, which is the, 3rd through the 10th of September, higher pressure essentially has taken over the pattern. Now, this may quite well be down to the MJO uh, strengthening in phases 4 and 5, which is enhanced convection over the maritime continent. So over Indonesia, we're seeing some of the strongest upward motion, and that sometimes can correlate to more region over both eastern North America and western portions of Europe. But it's quite interesting the stretched out nature of above average heights um, quite far north here. And you really have to go well up into the Arctic Circle to see low heights. In fact, let's have a quick look at that. Let's look at the Northern Hemispheric view for week one. You can see here that we have got um, the shrinking of that negative up in well up into the arctic circle here so uh, you know generally higher pressure is taken over the pattern then as we skip into week two you can see that we really lose the low pressure height field over the arctic even uh, we've only got the uh, neutral heights actually uh, up into this region here and look at how far north the region has become and again this doesn't always necessarily mean that we've got a blowtorch coming up in the days to come but uh, it'll be interesting to see the position of that high pressure core and essentially what kind of uh, temperature uh, setup we will get with that. Looking finally at the uh, Met Office chart here, this is uh, for 00Z uh, UTC. So this was midnight uh, back at the start of Tuesday, end of uh, Monday. You can see here the system moving in from a southwesterly direction. That is what brought the heavy rain and increase in winds as well. So we've got quite a, a gradient between 10, 1024 high over the mainland of Europe here, 994 millibars just to the west of uh, the UK and Ireland here. And then we've got that tightening of the uh, the isobars, meaning we've got strong winds. But there's that frontal system um, at uh, 12 UTC today, uh, draped across the heart of the UK. Either side of that boundary, sunnier and warmer. Underneath it, we've got some outbreaks of rain to speak about and that frontal system will eventually move south eastwards allowing initially the temperatures to rise uh, upper 20s to around 30 tomorrow and then as that uh, frontal system moves through we will drop the temperature by a good uh, six seven eight celsius between wednesday and thursday then as we play in towards the uh, middle and second half of the week you can see here more frontal systems kind of draped across the british isles if you notice here then they eventually clear through we're in 
a kind of west and northwesterly airflow by the time we reach Thursday and in the Friday here. Notice that the high uh, trying to build northwards here, but we've got northwesterly flow, meaning we are going to see temperatures dropping off. And we may see some fairly cool, fresher nights to contend with as well with that northwesterly flow. There's that high then exerting its influence at the surface, 1025 millibars over the UK during the course of Friday here. So that would be welcome news. Bit of a reprieve from any of the rain, especially across northern and western areas of the UK in recent times. Continuing to look at the CDAS 90 day temperature anomaly, uh, average to below average across the UK and Ireland here. That has been, um, it's been a cooling trend during the, the second half of this month. This is the past seven days in terms of the anomaly here. So cooling things down and allowing, uh, you know, August to cool off compared to where we uh, started off during the first. 10 days in the first half of the month, we had a, a firmly warmer than average anomaly here. But, uh, you know, if you look at the month to date, so this is up until today, 27th of the month, you can see here that we're sh continuing to shrink that warm anomaly across the southeast. We're seeing that blues representing warmer than average up in the northwest. And like I said already, it looks as if this is going to be the first summer where we've had an, a below average temperature anomaly. Uh, quite the opposite across central and eastern areas. It looks as if this has been the warmest summer on record here, but not so much for the UK and Ireland. So uh, I think that is it for today. Like, share and subscribe. Plenty of content coming up here through the rest of this week. So stay tuned for that and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Bye for now.